What's going on everybody and welcome back to Johnny K Picks and in this video I'll be going over my full card picks and predictions along with the bets that I'm looking at so far for UFC 308 Taporia versus Holloway. Now first things first please hit the like button for me subscribe if you are new or if you just haven't. Turn on the notifications so you know when I put out my videos when we go live on Wednesdays and Saturdays all that good stuff leave some comments on how well you did in the last card Vegas 99 what fight you're looking forward to for this one at 308 there's a lot of good ones especially on the main card and check out my patreon patreon.com slash johnny k picks put out all my early ufc stuff some other sports nfl uh soccer baseball whatever's going on also do ufc survivor pools and i'm also doing nfl survivor pools um there's only a couple people left so there, a new one will be starting so uh very soon so for ufc anyway so if you want to get in on that just either become a core member that's awesome and support the channel or you can join for free and also um play that as well so yeah last night um was ufc vegas 99 let's quickly go over that um it wasn't you know the greatest card early but it did get a little wild afterwards but the first one fraud number one rebel rebellus to spain versus austin lane um Rebellus is clearly a fraud. Um, he clearly didn't work on his ground game after he lost to Waldo the way he did because he literally lost worse to Austin Lane, who's not that good at all, honestly. And um, yeah, Rebellus is a complete fade for me every time. I don't even care. I hope he's a big favorite. And every time I will probably end up just picking against him and betting against him because look, if someone can remotely take down Rebella Bellis, which is pretty much anyone, he's gonna lose that fight. So there you go. Um controversy for me, and we'll probably talk about this for a while. Melissa Martinez versus Elise Ardeline. Um, yeah, okay. So we all know that Keith the ref messed up. That was a clean shot to the you know, up above the waist, should have been stopped there for a KO, but, but, I'm not debating this, this is what I'm debating right here, but it didn't happen, fight went to decision, and the judges gave Melissa, all three judges gave her 30-27, which is insane, there's no way Melissa Martinez won rounds one, and she definitely didn't win round two, and she clearly won round three, so I don't know what the judges were watching, because I thought Alice won rounds one and two and was pretty clear. Um, you might be able to go back and forth with the second round, but um, even then, like, she didn't win 30-27. Now, she, she, should she have won by KO in the third round? Yes, but if we're going by what happened, the, like, two wrongs don't make a right. Like, Keith messed up, should have been stopped, and then the judges messed up clearly because I don't know what they were watching. But anyways, that whole debacle made me lose a bet. So I'm real, I'm a little salty with that because there's no way that all three judges should have gave Melissa a 30-27. Anyways, should she have won in the third round? Yes, I'm not debating that. I'm debating how it was judged, and it made me lose a bet. We'll get to there, and I'm mad. Next one, Elise Reed versus Jessica Penne. Uh, Lead was able Reed was able to outstrike Penne. We all kind of figured that was going to happen if that's how she won. So Penny's a little old. She slowed down after the first round. She looked good in the first, but uh, Reed was able to get that one done. Pretty clear decision. But hey, they were able to judge that one correctly. Weird. Next one, Edwards versus Vidal. Vidal is not UFC material, and she's not good. Uh, Edwards looked very good, and she should have looked very good whether she missed weight or not, because there's levels, and Edwards was way above Vidal. Not to say Edwards is some kind of champion up and coming, but she was way better than Vidal. That was an easy play for me. Gene Masimoto versus Brad Katona, very fun fight. This is when the fights are getting fun now. Those first four fights were ridiculously bad. But, yeah, very fun fight for me. Um, very close. I did ever so slightly give it to Gene, though. Uh, I thought he won two rounds. Katona is super tough. He's very hard to beat. He's just super hittable. And I want to say, too, some of his body language when he does get hit, he, his head snaps back a lot. And I think that's 
it's just not a good look for the judges because I thought, like I said, just from seeing that alone, um, Gene, I thought he was landing the better shots, like just the harder shots, better shots. And um, yeah, so I gave it to Gene, but it was a close fight, 30 tw- or 20, 29, 28. So judges got that one right. So that's weird. Um, Asu versus Mateus Nicolau. Now, I did think Asu won 29-20. Again, the judges got that one right. It's weird. Um, but Nicolau, man, he's good. His problem is he's so freaking low volume. It's like frustrating. First round, he literally only landed two strikes. I mean, Almabayev landed six or seven or eight. Not to say that's anything better, but you can't give Nicolau the first round. And he didn't even do anything. Like, he's losing these close fights because he's so low volume. But if he just goes in there, maybe shoots a takedown, he does have very good grappling. You saw that in the Almabaya fight. He's got good scrambles. He can get some good submissions. He almost got Asu in a guillotine or I don't know if it's a guillotine or an arm triangle, whatever. But he almost got him out of there. It looked rough, but Asu was able to get out of it. But he's good. He just, he's too low volume. You can't ever pick him. You can't ever um bet him so good win from asu but i mean man nicolau he's gonna look back at this again he he's gonna look back at a lot of his fights and realize he probably could have won a lot of them so uh, hopefully he gets a little bit more aggressive he's just very 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 too too conservative let's put it that way uh very fun fight elkins versus pineta elkins still has it um and I was saying it in my breakdowns, Elkins probably wouldn't win round one, but if he if this fight got out of round one, he's probably going to win the fight no matter what. So that's what happened. I thought Elkins did good in round one. You could have gave it to him, but you probably want to give it to Pineta because he did end up doing a lot of damage at the very end of it and just looked better in the judge's eyes. But again, 29-28, that's, a, that's what it should have been, and that's what it was. Judges got that one right. Interesting. Um, love Elkins, though. My dude, local guy made good. Let's go. Um, fraud check number two. Jake Hadley is not a smart fighter. Very, he, I don't know what he is doing. He doesn't look like he wants to get hit out there. He throws like one or two punches at a time. Didn't even go for the wrestling until late in the second um, after he got a point deducted. And um, yeah, he clearly lost that fight on his own. Like, I don't know. He, I, I think he's just not a smart fighter. I don't think he's really even that good. He wasn't really that great at 125, and he's definitely not good at 135. I just think he's a, a weird in-betweener between 125 and 135, and he's just too big for 125, and he's too small for 135. It's weird. But good, good win from Smotherman. He looked good out there. Uh, good striking, went to the body a lot. I like what I saw. He did have a pretty good, um, didn't get really hit a lot too much because Hadley couldn't do anything the whole fight but good win and that was a crazy uh crazy win with all the thir- circumstances that he went through charles johnson versus suma darji knew charles johnson would get that one done um suma darji did pretty good though I, i'll give him that but you know you could tell he was starting to slow down a bit and charles johnson put on a good pace and was just outlanding him so 29 20 yet again um judges got that one right <laughs> broad check number three kyler phillips versus Rob Font. Um, I was telling everybody on the live shows and also in my breakdown, there's something in the back of my head, man, that I didn't want to bet Kyler Phillips because I knew there was this, uh, there was a chance that he could have just gassed out after the like round, round and a half. Because so we've seen it, I've seen it live. He did it. He shouldn't have beat Honey Barcelos, but it was super close. It was closer than this fight. But Rob Font clearly won rounds two and three in my eyes. Phillips was death gassed after round one after he was grappling which is weird because i thought he'd have a little bit better gas if he was grappling but clearly he doesn't so all the talent in the world but if you don't have cardio to back it up you're not going to win a lot of these fights and rob font is super durable he's only been finished like once or twice in his career and um yeah rob font got got it done the way he needed to get done so good job on him and yeah fluffy hernandez was dominant we all knew that Either fighter, whoever won, was going to look like they were minus 500, and he looked like he was minus 500, Anthony Hernandez. So um, I told everybody on Twitter I'm done picking against Marab, fluffy-type wrestler grapplers who has who both have insane cardio, and that's all they do because guess what? Those guys just win, 
And, you know, other than a fluke injury or a fluke KO or something like that, those guys are going to win nine out of 10 times every time. So uh, I know now, and that's what we're going to do. Great cardio, great wrestling, great grappling. You always got to pick those guys. There you go. Good win, though, from Buffy. I'm not going to take it away from him. So overall, it was a pretty good card, I would say, once it got into, you know, the first, after the first four fights, it was pretty good and pretty entertaining the, the whole night. So like what I saw from my bets and picks, my picks, I think I went seven and four. Personally, I thought I uh, should have won the Ardolene fight, but that's what it is. Um, for my bets, here they are. Um, I told you guys not to tail them. Um, somebody must have tailed the Pereira bet because that one uh, crashed and burned. And also somebody definitely tailed the point the point spread that I had on Ardolene, even though it wasn't the reason why was because somebody tailed that one. That was clearly on the judges. The judges did not want me to win that bet. Otherwise, I would have been up a little bit more than 2.22 units. I should have been up like five units. So it is what it is. The judges took a little bit from me. But overall, still a good night. Again, don't tell my bets ever because I've been on a roll when people don't tell my bets. So there's another 2.2 units. Last week, we won seven. So don't tell them, please, and thank you. And we'll move on to... UFC 308, we got 14 fights. Going to start early, 10 a.m. Eastern start time. For me, that's 9. So, yeah, I'm going to have my coffee. I'm going to open up a beer right away. And let's get it going. First fight. I will say a lot of these fights are interesting, to say the least. But this is what we got to go with. And uh, let's do it. Bruno Silva versus Ishmael Nuradiv. I'm going to hopefully that's good. I do not do well with these Russian names, but Silva, very good striker. He's got good power. He's very hittable on the feet, though, but he does have some wrestling. He can use every once in a while. We've seen in a few of his fights, pretty decent cardio. He can slow down at times. Um, His chin's a little suspect, though. I will say, but he's pretty durable normally. Um, He's look, you know, if you look at his last five, it's not a good look. I mean, he did knock out Tavares, so that was good. But he got choked out by Allen. Um, a lot of his losses are by sub. Some can be club and sub. This unfortunate Weidman decision, um, it is what it is. But, yeah. But Ishmael, you know, this is his second stint in the UFC. He was at the, in the UFC a few years ago. Um but he's an aggressive striker. He does have pretty decent power. He does have grappling and wrestling he can use. But um, he's just a little unreliable at times. He doesn't really – he's kind of like one of those fighters where he comes in with a game plan and or you think he should do this, and he just does the exact opposite, one of the, that type of fighter. Um, but, yeah, this, is, this could be a close fight because both guys are pretty untrustworthy, to be honest. I'm going to roll the dice – on Silva here, um, no bet from me. If I would bet anything, it would be the unders just to be, you know, cover both bases because I don't think this fight does go to the scorecards, but going to go with Silva. I think he can crack Ishmael at some point. I think he can um, use his wrestling if need be, um, but we'll see what happens here. Um, Ishmael is the younger guy by seven years, so that's something to look in into. It's a very closely lined fight for a reason, I think, because I can see both these guys winning. But I'm going to take a shot on the dog with Silva to win. I'm going to say by knockout in the second round, maybe. Um, but again, I don't think this fight goes to decision. So if you want to play the under, I think it's a pretty good um, bet. And if this fight is lined at one and a half, I like the over one and a half. See where that's lined at, too. So. There you go. Not really confident in this one, but give me Silva to win by KO. Next one is going to be uh, Ibo Aslan versus Rafael Serquera. I can't say that last name. Uh, we'll go with, I'll say Rafael. There you go. Um, but Aslan is a powerful striker. He's not very technical at all. He just loads up and hopes for hopes to land on your chin and get a knockout. He can wrestle sometimes, but not really. He moves forward. He's very hittable. His cardio is not good. But like I said, where his strength is, is power in his hands. If he lands, you're probably going to be knocked out. And Rafael, he's making his UFC debut. He's a pretty good striker himself. He does have good power. He can grapple, but he is more so a striker. He does like to push forward. He's very patient. He likes to counter. 
and um, sometime almost to a fault, kind of like if you want to say Nicolau, he's very patient. He can be a little low volume, but when he does land and he, he you know, he can knock you out too. But um, again, very close, closely lined fight and a close fight that I could see go either way. I would say the longer the fight goes, it might favor Rafael. But I think Aslan is more dangerous, so I'm going to go with him to win this fight. Not confident, not going to bet this fight. Um, again, you could do the unders here. Maybe the under one and a half, but lately these under one and a halves have not been hitting. Um, so if it, this fight is lined at over one and a half and you get a pretty good plus money, might not be a bad shot. But I'm going to go with uh, Aslan to win by KO, probably in the first or second round. We'll see what happens, but not very confident in this one either. I think it's a coin flip. Next one, pretty confident here with uh, Renat uh, Fakradinov versus Carlos Leal. And um, Fakradinov is a good wrestler. He's got good takedowns. He's got pretty good cardio. Striking is pretty good. Uh, we did see a, um, you know that straight right down the middle to rock Kevin Lee and get club and subbed right away. Um, you know he can slow down a bit, but he does have pretty good top control, pretty good ground and pound, and um, and Carlos Lee or Leal, um, UFC debut. He is taking this fight on short notice, but he is a good striker. He does have power in his hands. He's, he has good leg kicks. He likes to push forward. Some he's very easily counterable, if that makes sense. He can be countered easily. I said that really weird. He can be countered very easily. Um, but he does have he does like uh he is durable though, so he can take some punches. Um, he does have decent cardio too, so he doesn't really fade, but um, I, I would be interested to see him fight someone like Renat, though, who's going to probably wrestle and grapple for three rounds. So we'll see if that cardio can hold up for wrestling and grappling. But on the feet, he does, like I said, he, like, he likes to push forward. So I'm um, going to go with Renat here. Pretty confident that he gets this one done. But, you know, Leo's not a bum, per se. Just short notice, though, too. So that's what's, you know, it's hard to back someone like that. And Renat's not Jake Hadley. Let's put it that way. I think Renat's pretty decent. Um, so give me Renat to win. I'm going to say by decision, but it wouldn't shock me if maybe he gets a finish like in the second round at, at some point. But maybe look at the overs in this one. But I'm going to go with Renat. I don't know what the lines are. I don't think the lines dropped. I'm sure he's going to be minus 400 or more. So if you see the line and you want to jump on that, I wouldn't blame you. But do it quick because I'm sure he's going to end minus 600, minus 700. Um, kind of like Jake Hadley did. So there you go. Uh, next one, it skipped on me. It's going to be uh, Farid Basharat versus Victor Hugo. And Basharat, I think, is the better of the two brothers. He's very well-rounded. I would say he's got better grappling and wrestling, though. Solid striking. Um has very good takedowns. He's really not the greatest of finishers, if you want to say. That's kind of like his bugaboo. He did get a finish against Clayson Rodriguez, though, as of late. But most of the time, he's going to decision in his fights. Um, very safe and uh, calculated, um, but he's very well-rounded and a, a smart fighter. He's actually a smart fighter. Victor Hugo, he's the more dangerous guy of the two, though, He but he's well-rounded, very good striking, um, decent grappling as well, more so a striker. We've seen him slow down in a couple of his fights after the first round, so that's not going to be a good thing for him in this one. But, um, you know, his takedown defense is a little questionable, too. But um, in his last fight against Pedro, I thought that was a very close fight in uh, uh, Bashara is way better than Pedro. So give me Basharat to win by decision. Wouldn't shock me if it's a late finish, like a third, like a third round. You know, if he gas if Victor gasses a bit, maybe, maybe he does get a third round finish, but I'm gonna go with the um go go with Basharat to win by decision. I like the overs as well in this fight. And yeah, I think this one's a pretty no-brainer here. Next one. Kennedy Nijikwu versus Chris Barnett, Beast Boy. And yeah, this is this fight seems like you would see it like a um a low-level regional fight where it's like one of those crazy, I don't want to say freak show fights, but <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean. Because you know, Kennedy, how tall is he? He's 6'5, 83 inch reach, and then you have a 5'9, 75 inch reach guy. So two different um 
fighters here. Anyways, Kennedy, good striker. He does has shown some pretty decent wrestling. The thing with him, though, is you just can't trust him. Like one of the this is the fighter that you you're like, okay, all he needs to do is go out there and wrestle, or all he needs to do is go out there, stay on the feet and outstrike him, stay at range. He does the exact opposite. Very slow with his strikes. He can't his chin is a little dusty. Um, but like I said, if he does have a good game plan and he actually implements it, he looks pretty solid. But he is pretty durable though. Cardio's okay too. Barnett. You know, he is kind of sort of not really taking this fight on short notice. He was supposed to fight a couple weeks ago, but he had to cancel because I think he was in Florida when the, all the weather happened. But, you know, he's a he's a pretty good strike. OK, striker. He does have he's pretty athletic for the guy his size, if you want to say. A lot of overhand rights. That's all he really does. Um, he does have spinning attacks that he's not going to be able to touch Kennedy's uh, chin with his uh, kicks. I'd be shocked if he could. But if he does, great. Good on him. He does slow down as the fight goes on. Uh, we've seen that happen a couple fights, but I'm going with Kennedy and not betting this fight whatsoever. I do not trust Kennedy, but I do trust him enough to pick him, and uh, he should win this fight. But again, if this line is if the line is set at one and a half, look for the over. But um, if it's set at two and a half, that's when you can maybe look at the under here. But um, yeah, give me Kennedy to win. I'm gonna say by like a second or third round finish. And um, yeah, just can't trust him. I can't, can't pick, you can't pick or you can't bet on him. Next one, uh, Abu Megamedov versus Bruno Silva. And yeah, Megamedov, super dangerous striker. He can be hittable on the feet though. Doesn't really wrestle that much, but we have seen a little bit as of late that he can wrestle. Um, we also seen that he does slow down if he gets a little crazy after the first round. But um, I think the last fight, he went to decision, right? Yeah, he went to decision. So that was a good look for him. He looked really good. Got some takedowns, I believe. And then Ferreira, powerful striker as well. Heavy hands. Um, can be a little low volume looking for that counter shot. But it, like I said, if he can land on you, he's going to gonna knock you out. He's got power for days. Um, doesn't really grapple that much. He can you know, take you down and wrestle, but he wants to keep it on the feet. And also, he can be a little hittable. Um, you know, Magomedov's going to have a, what, four-inch reach and six-inch reach advantage. So that's going to be good because, you know, Magomedov does have very good kicks, too, up the middle. And he can stay at range and keep Bruno away from him. So just going by that, you know, I think Ferreira, how he has to win is going to be by knockout or some kind of finish. And I think Magomedov can win by knockout. And I also think he won a decision because I think he's going to be the one winning the points in the minutes this way. So give me Magomedov to win. Mind the minus 150. I'll see where the line goes. Maybe people, more people are on Bruno than I think. But I think Magomedov is a pretty decent bet at minus 150. And especially if you can get it closer to a pick em, I like it. Um, it is a little dangerous, I will say, because Bruno is dangerous. But I think Magomedov wins, and I think he can win more ways than Bruno. So I'll say Magomedov wins by decision. I know it's a little contrarian. Um, you would think both these guys are going to knock out, but I think Magomedov can mix in the wrestling and grappling a little bit, especially later in the fight. And um, I think he's going to do better in the striking too. I think Bruno's going to have to hope to land a good counter or something crazy to knock out Magomedov. So Magomedov by decision is going to be the play. This line set at over one and a half. I'll be looking at that. Next one, Saeed Nurmagomedov versus Dan Yell or Daniel. Willie Cat Santos. We haven't seen him in a while since almost a year and a half. Nurmagomedov, very technical striker. He's got very, very good kicks, a lot of good spinning attacks, good uh, jumping knees. Very sneaky grappling and submissions. We've seen him um, wrap up some ninja chokes and stuff like that. His takedown defense, though, is just okay. But he does work to get himself back up. He can uh, slow down if people implement the grappling. And a uh, very dynamic striker. And um, Santos, very good striker as well. He likes to push forward, shoot a box guy. He can be hittable. He can be dropped. He's very, he has very good knees in the clinch. He does have good grappling as well, but he also likes to keep it on the feet a little bit more than you would think. Um, yeah, this is going to be a fun fight. I just think right now, Saeed's the better striker. And I think he can land some good shots on Daniel and I just don't know if Daniel's going to be able to keep the pace and win 
think his only path to victory to win is a, a finish. And I don't think he's going to be able to finish Ner Nurmagomedov. I don't think Nurmagomedov's ever been finished. No, he hasn't. He's lost three decisions. Um, I think Saeed can win rounds one and two for sure at a high clip. It's just round three I'm a little sketchy with because he does slow down. And Santos does have good cardio. But I don't think it's going to be enough to win this fight. So give me Nurmagomedov to win by decision. But it wouldn't shock me if Saeed, you know, lands something good, uh, knocks down Santos and maybe gets a club and sub or something like that. Um, but I just think Santos needs to, he's like third, I want to say like third round finish or bust. But I like Santos, but I think this is just a tough, tough fight for him. So it's a big step up from Johnny Munoz Jr. to Saeed. So give me Nurmagomedov to win, I'm going to say by decision. Next one, Mick Tebek. If I said that right, I've been butchering his name since day one. Oral Bay versus Mateus Rebeski. So this is going to be a very fun fight. Looking forward to this one. Oral Bay is well-rounded. Uh, very good wrestling. Very good grappling. Good takedowns. He's got good cardio. He's durable. His striking is pretty good, too. But he we've seen a lot of grappling and wrestling from him. But he does have good uh, striking. Um, Rebeski, very good wrestler himself. Good uh, grappler. Great takedowns. Very powerful takedowns. Striking is just okay, but he's very powerful. If he lands, he's got a very sh um, short reach. He's got a 66-inch reach, so it's not going to be great here. He's given up eight inches there, so that's something to think about. But um, his cardio can slow down after the first round. We've seen it time and time again. He's very good in the first, and then he kind of slows down. Um, he does set up, use his striking to set up takedown. So this is an interesting matchup because I don't know what Rebeski is going to do. Um, I know what Oral Bay is going to do. He's going to try to get those takedowns because Rebescu's takedown defense isn't all that great. He's the one that's usually doing the takedowns. So I don't know if Rebescu is going to come in there trying to go for takedowns himself or is he going to try to keep this one on the feet and try to get knockouts. But um, I got to go Oral Bay. Um, Rebescu does have a chance for maybe a, a knockout early, but the longer the fight goes, I favor Oral Bay. Um, I don't think Rebescu is going to be able to win rounds two or three. And um, Oral Bay has a chance to win all rounds, actually, if he gets to, if the wrestling going, if he gets it going early. I like Oral Bay a lot here. So Oral Bay to win, I'm going to say by decision. But again, it could be a late third round finish because um, Diego Ferreira was able to get him out of there in the third round, I believe, or it was second. Second or third, I think it was third round. But that was a crazy, crazy how that went down. Never in a million years would have thought that would have went down the way it did. De Diego Ferreira looked great. And um, honestly, I think Earl Bay is better than Diego Fierro. So give me Earl Bay to win. I'm going to say by decision, like I said, but third round decision wouldn't be a bad bet either. Next one, Jeff Neal versus RDA Rafael Dos Anjos. So where am I at? Jeff Neal's a very good striker. He's got power for days. He could be a little hittable, but he's very durable. Uh, good volume as well. Good leg kicks. Good kicks in general. Very good takedown defense. Not very good. Solid takedown defense. He's very hard to take down. Let's put it that way. And RDA, he's 40 years old. I'm going to throw that out there right now. Well-rounded, though. Solid striking. Good wrestling. Good grappling. Got good timing on his takedowns. He's pretty durable. He has pretty good cardio as well. But lately, he's just not doing what he needs to do. Um, lost a Gamrot. Lost to Luque is not the greatest look. He was out grappled and wrestled by Vicente Luque. And they lost to Fizia, which is, you know, that was a fourth round or fifth round knockout late. But um, yeah. Um, and I'm and look at, I mean, you can go also go to the Neil side. The Gary fight was very close. Uh, he put on a good showing against Shavkat, who's probably gonna be a champion next coming up here in December. Gotta go Neil here. I think he gets it done. I think he does better with the striking, obviously. And also, I think he's going to be able to stuff the takedowns, the majority of them. So um, I'm going to go Neil by decision. I like the overs in this fight. Uh, I think if there is a finish, it's going to be from the Neil side. But Gosan, RDA is pretty good. And he's pretty durable. I think it will stay in there. I just don't think he's going to win the minutes. And I don't think he's going to win the striking either. So got to go Neil if that's the case, right? Um, I think he wins this one. Uh, Pretty high clip, and can't back a 40-year-old. Not in this fight. Only time I'm going to back a 40-year-old is if they're, if they're fighting another 40-year-old like Elkins and uh, Pineda. Look what happened. 
even matchup. This is not, I don't think this is an even matchup. So nail by decision is my pick. Main card, we finally made it. I feel like we've been talking forever, but Shara Magomedov versus Armin Petrosian. Um, I'm going to say this right now. I think this fight's going to be super, super close. I don't know. I have a weird feeling about this one. Magomedov is a very good striker. Um, power, has power for days. Solid take. Kickdown defense is okay. Luckily, he doesn't really have to worry about it here. Um, he's not a wrestler. He's not really going to wrestle. He's a finisher, but he hasn't really finished anybody in the UFC except Antonio Tricoli, who took that fight on super short notice. And um, Petrosian is very durable. He's a, he's a kickboxer himself. He throws tons of volume, very good kicks. His takedown defense isn't great, but luckily for him, doesn't have to worry about it. This is going to be a kickboxing fight, guys, just so you know, if you didn't know already. He's got good um, takedown defense, too, like I said, but doesn't have to worry about it. But, yeah, um, this is what I think. Petrosian's going to land more volume, but Magomedov is going to do have the more moments, maybe have the opportunity to get knockouts, all that stuff like that. And you also have to realize, too, I'm just looking, you know, Armin's only been knocked out once. And Shara, obviously, he can be a little hittable. He does have one eye. Um I gotta. I want to pick Armin so bad, but I, I feel like this is gonna be a close decision, and we have to remember where we're gonna be. Where is this card at, Udabi? Gotta go Magomedov, but Petrosian has a shot to win this fight. I was very close to picking him, but I just think Shara is gonna have just land the better shots, and I think that's gonna sway the judging. I really do. So, Magomedov, I'm going to say by decision. So, if you see a one and a half on this one, definitely play the over. I think it can go to decision more times than not. So, this is going to be a close fight. I wouldn't be super confident. Even though he is minus 185, it might seem like a steal. I don't think it is. So, next one, Magomed Ankalaev versus Alexander Rakic. And my wife is... Looking forward to this fight. And uh, between you and me, don't tell her who I'm picking. Magomedov, very good striker. Pretty decent power. Oh, I'm sorry. I said Magomedov. Uncle Live. I was looking at his first name. Uncle Live, solid technical striker with some power. You know, he, you would think he has more power in his hands. He did. He does have a couple knockouts. But that was against, um, what's his name? Kutalaba. Um, he can mix in some wrestling. He should mix in some wrestling anyways. Sometimes he can be a little low volume on the feet. He doesn't check his le leg kicks very well, which Rockich does have very good leg kicks. He's very strong kicks. But, um, yeah, definitely needs to mix in some wrestling in this fight. But Rockich is also very well-rounded. Striking is very technical. He can be a little hittable on the feet. As I said, very good kicks in general, leg kicks, body kicks. He can wrestle as well. He does have pretty good top control when he does. Um, he also can be a little low volume. So this is an interesting fight. I think Uncle Iab's going to win, though. I think he's going to be the one mixing in the wrestling and getting the takedowns. Uh, I think he could be a little bit better on the feet. Now, Rakic, if he can land some good leg kicks early, then that's going to swing the tide ever so slightly in his favor, and it might be closer to a pick -em. But, again, don't tell my wife. Picking Uncle Iab to win by decision and um, I just think he's just a little bit more well-rounded than Rakic right now. If Rakic, I, you know, Rakic apparently had staph infection against Yuri. I picked Rakic. He was looking good in the first round. And then he just death gassed in the second. And I'll give him a pass on that. But I think Uncle Iav's going to be a little bit tougher to beat than Yuri, personally. So, give me, and I know Uncle Iav isn't dangerous like Yuri is, but... He's tougher to beat. So, Uncle I have my decision. Be quiet. Next one. Lerone Murphy versus Dan Ige. Um, again, I think this fight's going to be super close. But Lerone Murphy, very technical striker. Good power. Good volume. Uh, takedown defense isn't the greatest. But he does have a pretty good get-up game. He is taken down. Um, not the most dangerous guy. He does go to decision a lot. He looked good in his last fight, though, against Barboza. But, you know, that was his first five-round fight, I believe. So, Ige, though, very good boxing. Uh, 
decent power in his hands. Um, he can wrestle, but normally he doesn't. Um, he mainly wants to keep it on the feet. His takedown defense isn't the greatest either, but he does have, he's very, um, he does have a good submission defense. He tries to get back up whenever possible. He doesn't accept being on the, on his back. Again, I think this is going to be mainly a striker fight. Maybe one of them mixes in some wrestling. If I do think if it does happen, it's probably going to be on the Murphy side, but again, I think this fight can play out so close, but I'm going to go with Murphy. I think he can win a two out of the three rounds. But I worry, this is like the Rob Font, Kyler Phillips. In the back of my head, I really feel like Ige has a shot to win this fight. And it's, I don't know why I'm not super confident in Mur Murphy. But I think Ige can win. I think he can win rounds two and three. That's what. That's probably the rounds he wins. I think this fight goes to decision, though, 100%. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust in Murphy. And it's funny because both guys are the same age, and I thought Murphy was going to be a little bit younger, which is weird. But um, give me Murphy to win by decision. I think it's going to be a split decision, and it could go to Ige. Also, look at Ige plus three and a half spread. I'm going to look at that right when that comes out. I think that is a great bet. So there you go. Co-main event, Robert Whitaker versus Hamza Chemaev. We've been waiting for Chemaya forever. Seems like he only fights once every year and a half or whatever. But anyways, Whitaker, we saw him last time in Abu Dhabi get that first round knockout. Awesome, awesome. But he's a very good striker. He's super technical, good boxing, good power. Takedown defense is pretty good. He does have res wrestling he can use, but he's probably not going to use it in this fight. I don't blame him whatsoever. We have seen his chin a little dusty as of late. He can get rocked a couple times. Against, I know, uh, Costa rocked him. He was able to, to recover there. Um, he destroyed Aliskarov. So, But then we got Chimaev here, who's a very, very good wrestler. Um, very good grappling. Uh, super crazy pace in the beginning of the fight in the round one. He does have pretty good striking, good power in his hands. He's very hittable on the feet, though. But he is very tough. He's very durable. But after the first round, he slows down. He puts on a crazy pace in the first round, and then he just, I don't want to say death gases, but you can notice a pretty decent size um, cardio just dump, if you want to say. And this fight's five, round, five rounds, guys. This is not a three-round fight. Um, yeah. I've been going back and forth because obviously it's Chimaev early or if this fight extends into rounds, you know, two, three, four, five, I like Whitaker. I am going to roll the dice on Whitaker here. I said it before. I said it in a long time ago. Whitaker can beat Chimaev. Granted, that was probably a year, year and a half ago. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to go with Whitaker surviving the first round and winning either a decision or maybe a late finish, but I'm going to go with a decision. Um, yeah, I think this is going to be, like I said, Chimaev early or Whitaker late. So I'm just going to bank on Whitaker surviving the early storm of wrestling and grappling. I think Whitaker is good enough to do that. And um, I think it's Whitaker all day. So this could be a good live betting opportunity after round one. But um, Whitaker, I'm going to say by decision, though. I think Chemayev can stay in there, but he's not going to be winning the rounds, especially the later rounds, like three, four, and five. I don't think he'll win those rounds for sure. So four and five, 150% for sure. But we'll see what happens. Going to go well with the dog, Whitaker. Let's go. Main event time, Ilya Teporia versus Max Holloway. This is going to be a crazy fun fight. But Poria's super well-rounded, dangerous everywhere. We've seen his, how dangerous he is on the feet with his boxing. Super crisp, works the body. Um, he does have very good wrestling and grappling. We haven't really seen it all of that much. We did see a little bit in the Emmett fight later on in the um, fight, like rounds four and five. But he's got good submissions, too. He can be a little hittable when he's a little too aggressive, but he does have a very good chin. He took a lot of good shots from Emmett, too. And we got Holloway, who puts on a crazy pace, throws tons of volume. He's got a chin on him as well. Um, super durable, cardio for five rounds all day. But um, you just, like, I know people are going to root for Max and stuff like that. I totally get it. But, man, if you're looking at this 
fight on paper and you're taking the names out of it and you see fighter one and fighter two, you're going to go with fighter one. Fighter one is Ilya Taporia because he's well-rounded. He's got, he can take this fight to the mat. I really think he can take this fight to the mat whenever he wants to. So if he's in trouble on the feet, he's probably going to test it first and see where he's at. But he has the wrestling and grappling to take this fight to the mat. And that's the difference here. So give me Ilya to win. Wouldn't shock me if he, if this fight goes to decision, wouldn't shock me if Ilya knocks out Holloway. It wouldn't shock me if he subs him either. So I think Max Holloway is going to have to win a decision because I don't think Ilya is going to get knocked out by Max Holloway. Ilya is too tough. He's too durable. He won't go out like that unless he just gets absolutely rocked. And Max just doesn't really have that power, even though um, he did destroy Gaethje in the last seconds. But Ilya is not going to let that happen. <laughs> so give me Ilya to win. I'm gonna say I'll say by decision. Um, it is tough to see Ilya knock out Holloway. Holloway's never been knocked out, let alone I don't even think he's been knocked down still. So Ilya by decision. That's what I'm going with. It's gonna be a fun fight. All right, that is all 14 fights. Um I think it's gonna be a fun card, especially the main event. And um Hope everybody enjoys the fights. Thank you for watching. Um, good luck on your bets. Um, please hit the like button on your way out. Uh, defend your units. Me and Cody from Blood Money MMA Bets will be live Wednesday night. Saturday is going to be a potential watch along early in the morning. So if you want to hang out, it's going to be on my channel. Um, I'll let you guys know. So turn on the notifications so you know when that comes out. It's going to be right when the fights start. So there you go. That's all I got to say. This has been 40 minutes. I feel like we've been talking for an hour and a half. So I want to try to get this done early, but it is what it is. Good luck to you. And uh, we'll see you Wednesday night. Till then, happy fight night.